Okay, very good. Good evening, uh, dear Toastmasters, guests, uh, Toastbusters. Today is a special meeting, number 166, and uh, it is special because today we are going to have a table topic contest. A very special event because it's a kind of Olympic Games within Toastmasters. We have uh, uh, the competition within the club, then the competitions between the clubs within Moscow, and the next level is competition between the clubs in, uh, in uh, different countries. So the next uh, uh, international co uh, uh, conference, I think, is going to be uh, in Poland, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Right. Uh, for today, um, Actually, every, every meeting we have a, a tradition and I would like to invite to the stage uh, those people who came to the meeting first time. So, please. Uh... You are not first time, okay. Okay, very good, very good. So, this is for... A little introduction. Uh, so my name is uh, Nikolai Dinosenko. I am president of this club, Toastbusters Club. Toastbusters Club is uh, a club uh, with a purpose for developing public speaking and uh, leadership skills. Uh, so and, uh, the question for you, uh, your name, occupation, interests, how did you know about the club and uh, your expectations? So as for me, I didn't expect anything about the club. My husband brought me here, <laughs> and I just wanted to speak a little bit, to listen to other people. Uh, my name is Lena. Uh, I'm a housewife at the moment. Uh, I used to work as a teacher, but uh, so now I'm totally free. <laughs> yes, that's okay. It. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. to improve their speaking skills, to learn from this experience and, of course, to show those talents, those techniques that they already possess. Our chief judge today is Adil Tashan. Uh, <coughs> can you stand up, please? I have a small question for you. Has 
your team been briefed? Yes, my team has been briefed. Okay, thank you. Well, as you see, we have the number of our participants, our contestants, and the range who will come first and who will come after who. I should also say that to be eligible to compete on the club level in the table topic contest, each contestant must be a Toastmaster and a club be a paid member. And of course, uh, this member should not be a district or international officer. And I should say that both of these Yes, thank you. Have been fulfilled. Also, I should tell you about the time and our dear timer, whose name is Irina. Irina will help me with that. The time for table topic speech is two minutes. The green light will be shown. Could you, Irina, could you show us the green light? Yeah, this light will be shown at one minute. The yellow light will be shown at one minute and thirty seconds. And the green light uh, and the red light will be shown at two minutes and will remain shown until the speaker finishes his speech. I should also say that if the speaker is below or higher than his speaking limit, I mean less than one minute and more than two minutes, 30 seconds, he will be disqualified. And now it is time to ask our dear sergeant at arms to escort all the speakers except Colin through the door to wait for their turn. Dear fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests, uh, the start is what stops most of us. Well, having to think about this, um, as for me, I can say that I, I, I have beaten this uh, terrible dilemma where we're afraid of the start. Um, and I realize that I'm not afraid of the start of, of anything anymore. So I would like to perform my short speech to give anybody who is afraid of the start a little bit of advice. So first I would say that yes there is a big problem when we have a lot of fear and we're terribly terribly afraid of starting out on a new journey. Uh, it can be very scary to realize we have such a big journey ahead of us uh, if, if you have a goal and, uh, and you have a vision that you want to achieve. Um, 
it, it is a difficult thing, but honestly, uh, you've got to think about the metaphor of how to wash a car. And <laughs> washing a car is a really boring thing to do, but if we just start doing it, eventually we find that we actually enjoy washing the car and really get into it. And before we know it, the car is clean and everything is done. So just start washing the car. Uh, second, we have what people call haters. So um, if you've got a goal and you tell people, and people say, ha, ha, no, probably you can't do that. So, but no. Or you have friends and family that advised you against it, and other people can put you off uh, heading for your vision. And I would say that the best thing to do that I've found is just don't tell anybody. <laughs> just start in secret. Get the ball rolling, and before you know it, you'll already be stuck in the zone, you'll be in the flow, and when you tell people, it really won't matter, actually. Um, finally, I think that I would like to talk about more a period that I like to call the dip. It's something that when you've started a journey, uh, for example, learning a new language or starting a new project, after the start, you have a period of demotivation. And that is often the killer for a lot of people. But what you want to do is just keep going because you find your motivation comes back. So there are my three things. I have to stop. So thank you. The table topic is the start is what stops most of us. The start is what stops most of us. Do you need 30 seconds to do? Yes. Okay, we need 30 seconds. Okay, the start is what stops us. What does it mean in our life? You see, we are afraid of this blank list in front of us. We can write anything on this blank list, but we got used to some directions right from the, our birthday that we need to do this, then we need to do that, we need to go under some requirements and directions. But here is the start. The start is the first thing that you should uh, go, the, the first the first step in, on your way to some goal and this is, this is the most difficult thing to do because the second and the third step will be much much easier to do and uh, I wanted to say that there are other you know distractions in our life some uh, other things that we, we want to postpone that's what's called the procrastination when we want to do something when we, when we want to check Facebook or any other thing there is some small monkey in our head that, that says us, don't do that, just relax, do some other stuff, play games, check your Facebook or YouTube. But you should uh, take under control this little monkey and do what you want, do uh, go, to your, uh, go to your goal, to your dreams, make a first step and do not afraid of anything. Just stand up and uh, go for it. And uh, that, that's what I wanted to say uh, when the starts that stops us. Uh, the thing that should be the first, the first thing that uh, force you to do something in your life. Thank you. Thank you. And now, I would like to please come to the stage. I ask you to give a round of applause. Nikolai Dvysenko, the start is what stops most of us. The start is what stops most of us. Nikolai Dvysenko, do you need 30 seconds or you are ready to go? Uh, the phrase which you just gave me it is uh, the question which I know. Yeah. If you didn't get it from my words, I have a small list of people. The start is what stops most of us. 
That's interesting. That's a very philosophical statement. Yeah, I, I, should I, that's what I should say because um, start is something beginning. It is stepping into terra incognita. It is something new. It is start, which means you didn't do it before, normally. And then, normally, people have uh, a barrier for uncertainty. To go to uncertainty is very difficult for people. That's uh, usual. That's, that's why people stopped before opening the door. And, uh, uh, and I think this is the reason why it is uh, actually stopping us. Though, those people who are brave enough to open the door, to start actually, and do not stop at the, at the front of the door, they have much better, much more opportunities uh, to go further and start again and start again because that's also something which people learn because uh, when you start one more time and another time again start start then you have a, a, a custom to uh, to repeat this and uh, it's easier for you to continue in, a, in a such way I think it's it's uh, thank you very much for the very philosophical things which uh, generates quite a lot of thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. And a minute of silence for our journey. Chu. <laughs> the start is what stops most of us. The start is what stops most of us. Denis Chu. Just in case, it wasn't the title of my speech today. <laughs> It was the table topic, right? Start is what stops most of it. It's obvious. It's obvious. It's difficult to start anything, right? You want to become a feeder, you say, I'll start from Monday. Then you say, I'll start from Monday. Then you say, I'll start from Monday. And then your friends come and say, he was a good man. <laughs> right? You want to become a Toastmaster. A public speaker, you say, I start from the next Toastmaster meeting. I start from the next Toastmaster meeting. You start, you start, and then you start going to La Toast, <laughs> <laughs> which is not good. So the problem is obvious. Everybody knows about it. You want to do something, you start doing it right now. You want to become a good Toastmaster, pay to Agile, start going to Toastmasters. You want to become fear. There are different ways to do that. Stop eating as much, stop doing exercises, participate in contests because it's a nervous thing, makes you sweat, makes you lose weight. And over, but, 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 I, but I think you know the problem, you know the solution, but I think that most of you, such as 90, 80 percent, are pretty good because you already started, you already came here, you made the first step, so I think everything will be good for you, just Carry the wisdom to your relatives and your close friends. Start is what stops us most of the time. So start doing what you want. And what? Thank you very much. Alexander Sherbakov, the start is what stops most of us. The start is what stops most of us, Alexander Shibov. Mm -hmm. Do you need 30 seconds for preparation? Please.
somebody, if some, somebody amazing experience waiting uh, all the men, it will be experience, it will be hard task for this old man. But uh, it is very uh, necessary actions of our life. Um, you know, uh, one person who said, uh, uh, it is, I uh, make uh, uh, my step, a uh, little step for, for, for myself, but it's, it's very large step for our uh, human, for, for, for all humans. It, will, it was uh, 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 Neil Armstrong. And uh, I uh, want to wish you uh, to find uh, to find uh, what will be inspire you for your first steps. Uh, which I wish you good luck for your way. Thank you. For your The start is what stops most of us. I wish to write in my diary. And then take this piece of paper, tear it out and throw it in the fire. And I see how it's burning, because it's absolutely truth. And these words are inside of my memory. One year ago, I was with my family in Rome. And we've been walking in this wonderful city full of these big cathedrals, roads, shops, people speaking all languages in the world. And then we come in one of the largest cathedrals inside of the Rome. And we walk there and look around, it was a fantastic, huge building, big blocks of stone, you know, and in the middle you can see the big vessel with the water in it. My son, he was 12 actually at this time, say, hey father, what is it? And I said, well son, that's a holy water. And he said, holy water? What does it mean? I said, you know, that's a something that's been blessed by God. And he said, yeah, really? How people use it? And, and the first thing come up in my mind, after watching all these movies about all kind of creatures, you know, who've been thrown with the holy water to baptize them and to stop and take the evil out of them. And I said, you know, people use it to take the evil out of other people. He said, yeah, really? What does it mean evil inside of other people? I said, you know, some people look oh, like this and they have strange sounds and they, they, they scream and they have something spitting out of their mouths. He said, you know, Father, I want to take some of this water. So said, really? Okay. We start filling it up. And once we filled up, I asked him a question. Why do you need this water? And he said, you know, Father, I have a teacher of English. And she is possessed with evil, trust me. And at this moment I understand that the things I start with was incorrect. And this was making me mistaken. And I said, son, try. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and judge, and our dear counter, uh, defining who is the winner today. I want to ask all of our contestants to come to the stage once more and we will have a short interview. Please welcome once more. Paul, Irmia, Nikolai, Dennis, Alex and Alexei. And the first question I want to ask all of you 
is it will be related to your personal Toastmaster journey. You can tell how you started, where it led you, and what did you get from it. Eric, please start. Okay, my journey started in the Moscow Free Speakers Club on uh, 2012, and the uh, vice president of education was uh, Denis Chuk, and uh, I was waiting for my icebreaker. The, I was breaker speech. I was eager to do it, and uh, Denis provided me this with this opportunity, and uh, I I was eager to. I was um, energized by this uh, by this club, by this atmosphere, by these people. So that's why I'm coming. I'm keeping. I keep coming to the meetings, and uh, hopefully we'll do it forever. <laughs> Thank you. And what about you, Denise? What is your personal Toastmaster journey? I think you have a lot to say to us. How much time do I have? <laughs> uh, let's try to put it in one minute and 30 seconds. Alright. <laughs> we already know. <laughs> 20 or 9. Right. I had some free time on my hands and I wanted to practice English and it, and it didn't know where to go. I want to practice English and there, are, there were several options. One of them was to go to a cafe, speak with people, it's not interesting. It's difficult to keep up the conversation, you're not interested in people, they're not interested in you, and so it's difficult. But then I learned about Toastmasters, so I went to Toastmasters. I loved it from the first start. You know, when I was young, my mama used to tell me all the time that, Dennis, you have to earn money by public speaking, by joking in public. And I didn't know what to do with it, but when I came to Toastmasters, after some time, I learned how people started treating me with respect, and I loved the experience. And I can't say that many people respected me outside of Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> but in Toastmasters, I found a lot of support. I've been doing it for a lot of, a lot of time. I, my English became much better. And at some point, I grew brave enough that I decided to try stand-up comedy. So Toastmasters started for me, it gave me respect of people and support, I became braver and I started experimenting with things and now I ended up with stand-up comedy that I like them very much and I keep going to Toastmasters, keep going to Toastmasters, it's a great place to be, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Carlo, and what about you? What is your Toastmasters channel? Uh, so five years ago, I couldn't speak a word of English. <laughs> I came here and as you can see, I mastered it. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, um, I was really into stand-up comedy and I was going to, I did some stand-up comedy in England, I used to do a lot of it. Uh, when I came over to, to, uh, to, to Russia, um, first I went to Siktivkar, it's a long story, but I was not in Moscow. Um, so I was, around for, in other parts for a year, so it meant that I couldn't do any stand-up comedy. When I came back to Moscow, I realized there was a big stand-up circuit, a small stand-up circuit, in English anyway. Um, and I was lucky enough to meet Dennis here, uh, and he recommended coming to Toastbusters, and uh, it was good that it was on a Wednesday as well. It suits me perfectly. So I came and I really enjoyed it. I liked the people. I found it to be a very supportive uh, environment. The fact that you have a, a booklet with uh, 10 speeches in it and goals kept me going. Um, so it's, it's very good to get the help on speeches and see that you're making progress. And uh, I really like speaking in front of an audience and improving my skills. So uh, glad to be here and glad that you invited me here. Thank you. difficult to uh, imagine that uh, four years ago I didn't know about Toastmasters at all and my journey to Toastmaster connected to some mystery because uh, I, was a I had a conversation with my 
uh, line manager, and uh, she was uh, based in The Hague, uh, Lillian, and uh, she said, well, Nikolai, uh, I don't know whether it exists in, in Russia, and we talked about uh, uh, personal development, to develop uh, personal something, and uh, she said, well, I don't know whether, whether uh, you have such clubs in, in Russia, but uh, I know uh, Toastmaster is great, and I'm a member of Toastmaster Club, here in the Hague. It's something you should try. Strangely, and uh, that's, that's where mystery comes, uh, same day uh, my uh, neighbor uh, uh, in the office, uh, uh, Mikhail uh, Pakutny, you, all of you know about him, uh, he, because he used to be a president of Toastmaster Club, uh, I asked Mikhail, and we didn't talk about Toastmaster before at all. As I said, I didn't know about it. Same day evening, uh, I asked, uh, well, Mikhail, what's your plan for evening? And he said, you know, uh, uh, tonight I'm going to go to the uh, uh, jazz, uh, because he has, he's playing jazz, and then tomorrow I'm going to go to Toastmaster Club. Toastmaster. It's the second time within one day I heard about Toastmaster because I didn't know it at all before. So and I thought it's, it, it is a sign. I should, I should be here, definitely. So and I came next day, actually I came together with uh, Michael uh, Pakutny uh, uh, to, to the club. And uh, that's, that's uh, my journey, how I came here. And uh, then of course lots of uh, stories about how I, I, I grew up and, uh, and everything. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, actually I joined to the Moscow Free Speakers in 2010, so it's been quite a long way. And the first thing I heard when I came to the Moscow Free Speakers, first Toastmaster meeting, someone told Alexei, we are developing leadership skills in the public schools here. And that was not true. Actually, I have developed a lot of other skills, and I want to share about other skills rather than public speaking and leadership, which was also developed as well. The first was about evaluation in my not very thick skin. My first evaluation of my icebreaker was very, very bad. So the person came on stage and said, Alexei, that was the most terrible icebreaker I've ever heard. So that was bad. And after the minute, he said, Alexei. And then it disappeared for six months. <laughs> right? Because I, it was, I was ashamed. My face was red and I understand that I failed. I, I did not meet expectations. So if someone expected me to do something, I did not do that. Now, after so many years, I understand that, that that was kind of like a getting out of my comfort zone. And I'm very respectful to the person who did it to me. Because if that would be too nice, I probably would not you know, overcome something to start developing faster. So that was very important. Another very important skill in a, in a Toastmaster is networking. We are networking. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't have any colleague here, I don't have any relative or neighbor. We, we, we met here and now we hug and we are happy, we remember the names sometimes. So <laughs> we, we are developing this quite unique skill of the networking. That's quite amazing. I do not hear a lot of people using this networking for something like searching the job or maybe getting something. Maybe some of them, yes, but this is a good opportunity because that's something that must be number one nowadays, network. That's the skills I'm uh, working on and I think those muscles are great for developing that. Thank you. Alexander, and what about you? Uh, Toastmasters organization and Toastmasters club is a uh, very strange place which I can choose for myself because uh, 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 when I speak sometimes when I speak when I'm speaking with my mother on Russian language uh, uh, he she uh, she's uh, usually she uh, say to me uh, you can you should speak faster on Russian language you should problem you can't to express your thoughts on Russian language. Uh, at first, uh, I am not a public person. At, at second reason, we 
why I shouldn't to be here. <laughs> and uh, I don't uh, know, I didn't know English language at all when I visited Toastbusters Club for, on the 1918 year. Uh, I, I, uh, I am a person uh, which uh, find a uh, hard way. <laughs> <laughs> I can't understand uh, 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 this fact why I'm here. <laughs> but I'm here. Thank you, Alex. I think the thing you are talking about, the overcoming your fear, and not only of the fear of public speaking, but the fear of speaking on another language, is one of the things that drive most of people here the things that help us improve ourselves. And this is one of the majority of other things that we all have in common. And now I have one more question for you. Some of you have answered it already. So it's your decision to answer it or skip your turn. How do you use your Toastmasters experience in your real life? in your relationships and in your own. So now you just decide who speaks first. Who is ready to speak? Just, uh, I think you, if, if anybody answers yeah, this question, I... everybody will have, do, want to take the opportunity to speak <laughs> and okay. talk about it. For myself, it's just one indicator uh, if it's good for me or not. For, for, not useful for me is that how I feel after the meetings. When I go home, I feel energized. I have positive energy. I'm thinking about what I said, what the feedback I got, even the harsh feedback. But uh, maybe I'm thinking maybe I'll, I should have told some other thing. But the, the whole, the, you know, the whole thing that in my head is very positive and very good. That's very good to, for my life. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. Yeah. Now, before, before we go on the question, I think we should give a, a very loud round of applause for the oldest Toastmaster in the whole world. Alexander Starin won the Toastmaster a hundred years ago. 1918. 1918. Yeah. Toastmasters wasn't even there. Great, great. Not a person. Uh, regarding Toastmasters and how, how it helped me. Well, first, as, as I said, since I had a lot of positive feedback about being a good public speaker, I became braver and I was open to experimenting with other, with other public speaking things like stand-up comedy. And the second thing I agree with Lucy that I think since we are criticized here publicly, not person to person, but publicly, it makes it easier for you to withstand the criticism, criticism in the future. And that's why I think that when I had several situations at work when my boss, my boss approached me and he started giving me feedback and I said, okay, okay, I understood. He lives in people. He just mopped the floor with you. you know? it, it was just a feedback. <laughs> Constructive feedback. What, what do you think? <laughs> Being braver, being able to take feedback without flinching. Very good things I've taken from those questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dimas. Hi. Uh, as for me, I like to come and laugh at everybody's bad English and it makes me feel <laughs> just on top of the world. <laughs> 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 No, I'm extremely motivated actually by people learning English here. Like I remember uh, when I started and he couldn't speak a word. Um, and now he's up here uh, in a competition. So, well done. It's, uh, it's so, I started learning Russian way before you started learning English and my Russian is terrible. Really, really good. So. so it's things like that that sort of inspires me. Uh, people getting on, uh, the, can we call it a stage? 
uh, to the front of the hall and doing speeches. I find people's speeches really interesting because uh, with Toastmasters Club you have a lot of different people and I think the people are, are, are who make it. So I wouldn't come to the club if there was nobody here. Obviously there'd be nobody here. Um, so hearing like different points of view, uh, there was one speech that Nikolai did and it was about art and I remember the speech because it was really interesting to find out like different perspectives of, of artists you know, not in your head so you remember it too. So, I think that your level of knowledge improves because you're hearing so many people speak and also you're improving your public uh, English skills and you're surrounding yourself with people who are uh, actually attempting to do things with their lives which <laughs> as for me that's, that's really cool and it's really motivating so thank you. Thank you. Nicola, and how do you use your Toastmasters experience in the neighborhood? Okay. <clears throat> uh, I have uh, three points to answer to this question. Number one, uh, Toastmaster Club is a kind of healthy club. Um, some people go to gym doing some physical exercise. Uh, but uh, when you come to the stage, I can tell you, your blood becomes flowing, you know, within your body, much better than any gym. <laughs> so it's really healthy. Uh, your um, adrenaline and some other fluids growing, you know, flowing within your body and it is really energetic, I can tell you. <laughs> but seriously, uh, uh, the club is great in terms of people uh, because uh, uh, sometimes I compare a Toastmaster Club with the theatre. You go to theatre and uh, see performance. Uh, sometimes it is touching, sometimes it is not, uh, and it is kind of basic exercise for you. But here, people are trying to perform at their best, and I can tell you, sometimes it is much better than performance as a theater, and it's only one hundred rubles. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's amazingly. Uh, so uh, people are trying to do the best here which is really great. And, uh, uh, and the third thing is a, a phenomena of, of Toastmaster. It is, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's really strange because people are spending energy, time here, and for not money, it's not earning any uh, 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 things here, but it's, uh, it's so, many effort, so many efforts that people have to organize this meeting, to organize every meeting, and it exists for many years, and that phenomenon is, is really impressive. Uh, that's, that's why I'm here to, to learn about this more. Thank you, Nikolai. I will be very brief. Okay. Uh, especially for newcomers, the CC manual is absolutely a it's get under my skin. Every time when I prepare for any speech, even at work, I remember what was in CC manual. Mm. And it was some vocal variety, and it was like gestures, and, and, and a variety, and, and, and all kind of stuff. And it's just, and it gives so many knowledge. It's been absolutely one of the most useful books in my life. How I use Toastmaster, I have to do a lot of the public speaking. I speak on quite a convenient topic. Uh, I'm not going to dig right now about this, but sometimes I speak front of a large audience, like I, I won, uh, I've been in February in Dubai and it was a full room of the uh, local management in a special clause and stuff and they have to pursue them and change your opinion about certain things. That was quite difficult. Uh, next week I'm going to talk in front of 1500 people. So uh, again, I'm going to talk about something unusual for them and uh, I'm expecting them to change a little because they remind something about. So I think the, the performance of public speaking deliver a message to present it in the way that is changing people's opinion, that's something that was must have helped me. Without it, I probably would not succeed even 10% out of the success I have right now, but I'm still at 10% of what I believe I need to get. Thank you. Thank you.
Alex Shepakov. Um, you guys can you come closer? I don't think 
That was not quite easy actually, and I can tell you lots of things, and that's a different discussion, but that's a, a quite an interesting journey, I would say, <laughs> we had to, to organize everything. So, Alexander, uh, I would like to thank you. Uh, uh, Margarita, thank you very much. Margarita is uh, uh, secretary of Dos Basta Club, and uh, I, I would like to applaud Alexander. <laughs> Uh, Vice President of Membership, uh, thank you very much for organizing this thing. Uh, Alexander Shekhovakov, uh, who helped us uh, for video and other things, uh, thank you very much also. Member of the uh, next meeting will be a usual meeting. And for newcomers, usual meeting means prepared speeches and table topic exercise, similar thing which we, we did uh, here but uh, you can participate uh, on those exercises as well. So, welcome for the next meeting, which is going to happen in two weeks' time. For, for us to, uh, for you to come to the uh, Institute without any barriers, uh, we need to have uh, uh, a scan or photo of your passport, first page of your passport, then we can submit it to Institute and then they can issue a, a permanent pass for you for all our meetings. So that's uh, quite quite important things for, for us. Uh, however, in uh, in uh, uh, November uh, November 14th, we are going to have another contest, which is going to be a speech contest. 
Uh, so uh, please uh, submit your uh, willingness to to go to the to participate in the in the uh, speech contest. It's going it's going to be a humorous speech contest uh, to Margarita. Okay. Uh, right. And uh, in December, December uh, eight and nine. Uh, it is weekend. We are going to have winter conference. So it is going to be really, really interesting uh, international event. Lots of people are going to come to Moscow from many countries. They are going to make speeches. We will uh, have some training exercises over there. It will be great community to communicate with. So I would like to invite all of you to participate in, in the uh, to join the winter conference. So uh, that's uh, 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 that's an interesting event. Um, I don't know, uh, Tatiana. Maybe you can explain me what's what's current uh, uh, fee to participate over there in uh, uh, in winter conference. Uh, it's uh, now it's uh, about uh, one thousand and uh, five hundred. 1,500 rubles. Yes, uh, uh -huh. it's only two days, but not, not only, I mean, it's it, actually it's a small amount, yeah, for the two days conference uh, with uh, five uh, workshops. Uh, the workshops will be conducted by international Toastmasters. Uh, they uh, will come special for this event, we uh, invite them. And uh, actually, yes, lunch and, and so on, I mean, it's uh, two, two days and it's 100, uh, uh, one, 1,500 uh, for conference, but if you want uh, to to go to brunch party in, in the evening of uh, Saturday, it uh, together with the conference it's uh, 2,700. But the price uh, the prices they are increasing because I mean we have a, a special amount of tickets uh, for it was early birds now it's this price and then it will be increasing and increasing because actually uh, we invite in general 120 people and uh, i'm also in uh, organizing team organi organizing team and uh, yeah it, it will be a lot of uh, people we uh, found a beautiful conference uh, uh, room and uh, it will be really something special and you will see uh, the Toastmasters uh, from another clubs and it re it, it's really motivating if you if you visit this conference it will be really for you something special okay, thank you, <laughs> it's thank really you. we try to do it uh, to do our best we want to do uh, this conference uh, even better than before that's why that's why it will be awesome just come and see it. <laughs> Right, uh, thank you very much Tatiana. And uh, uh, more information you can see at the uh, website toastmaster.ru. If you go there, you can see the whole information about the winter conference, uh, how to pay, where uh, it is going to be, etc. Uh, yeah, um, also information about the workshop and uh, the, the title of the workshop you can see. And about venue, it will be in this place. No, no, it's not in this place, it will be in Kaliber, if you know, it's uh, Metro Alexeyevska. Uh, it's a co-working Kaliber and they have a um, big, uh, so, okay. modern uh, conference. Uh, you know? Yeah. Right, um, that's uh, uh, information. Huh? Sorry. <laughs> Public speaking, not public writing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, we have uh, uh, this box um, called Money Box, uh, 100 rubles for uh, to help the club uh, to organize everything uh, for the for the events and for the for the our meetings. Uh, what else we have? Um, we have one more thing to announce. I, I know that's uh, uh, yes. What's your name? John. John, John Bar. John uh, just came to us. Uh, you are Toastmaster as well, right? I am not. I'm only a visitor. Oh, 
Ah, you're a visitor. Yes. Oh, but I've been here three times. When I do? Okay. Yes. Ah, good. And you have something to say to announce uh, uh, some other event, right? Yes. You, you mentioned. Uh, uh, my company, the uh, English Exchange, we put on a professional training conference twice a year. And we have a uh, training conference coming up next weekend, the weekend after this one. We have uh, people who come from the United States and they speak on top professional topics uh, that help professionals uh, gain leadership skills and, and development. Uh, this, this coming uh, conference, we are actually speaking on the start. Is the, no, just kidding. Uh, it is on crucial conversations. How do you handle those conversations with uh, employees, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, bosses, uh, with family members that are difficult to handle and many times go wrong and then end up causing problems? Uh, there is a book, it's in, in Russian, it's called Trudne uh, Dialogi, mm -hmm. and uh, that is the uh, topic for this conference. If you're interested, it is 1,000 rubles for, one, uh, for the one day uh, opportunity. We do have a full weekend if you want to come and I can tell you more. But if you're interested, talk to me afterwards. Uh, it's a good time to uh, develop leadership skills and interact with, uh, in English with uh, native English speakers. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, sounds like uh, public speaking and uh, conversations, uh, yep. effective conversations is a hot topic, right? It's yep. quite a lot of uh, things are going on there. Right, um, uh, we have all another tradition after the meeting, uh, we have uh, uh, sometimes we go to a, a, a cafe, so uh, you, you are welcome to go there as well, uh, so uh, after the meeting uh, you are, so it's Shekaladnitsa cafe nearby to uh, Arctiavorska metro station, so we can, we can continue our discussion, talk over there. Right, with that, I'd like to close this meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you for your active participation. I think it's, it's, it was a good meeting. Thank you.